Welcome to this video blog. My name is Robin Beta and I am the Requirement Definition and Management Community of Practice Architect. Today I'm going to talk about Rational Requirements Composer and how we've been using version 1 to develop version 2 features. So I'd like to start by showing you a roadmap for building the right solution. And what we're going to be looking at is the various aspects of developing the right solution. We're starting from the business opportunity, understanding the desired outcomes, exploring solutions, evaluating alternatives, then augmenting the specification, developing a solution, evaluating results and deploying the solution, as well as you know, migrating you know, through this process multiple times in a very iterative fashion. So let's start at the beginning with business opportunity. One of the things I want to show you here is that we've developed a review and approval process. So let's examine that requirement. You will see from this feature description that the review and approval process uh, supports iterative review and approval of requirements by enabling the analyst to lead stakeholders and other analysts through a well-defined, partially automated review and or approval of requirements artifacts. And you'll see that there are various needs we have in here, but also you'll see that the date it was created upon, when it was last modified, you know, what sort of type of requirement it is, what its priority is. But also, were there any uh, comments associated with this? And you can actually see here we have 12 comments. If I highlight all the comments, you'll actually see that the comments are displayed in green throughout this document. And that m means that people have been providing feedback. And we can see that the people who have been by grouping by author. And you'll see that Kirk has been giving three comments, uh, myself seven, and uh, Tina two. So what you see here is an evolution of the requirement from its original definition with feedback from the team members. But then we have also related it to various other requirements we may have, but also linked it to other artifacts that will actually support the evidence that's described here in this high-level feature. So this is the basic business opportunity that we've looked at. So now let's go back to presentation. And what we can see here is that the next part of the step is understanding the desired outcomes. So what's that mean? Well, we start to look at what's there and start to evaluate it. So let's explore that a little further. And you'll see here that we have a number of links. And you know, one of these links is actually to a scenario. And I'm going to click on this scenario. And this will actually provide more knowledge about understanding what we're trying to achieve here. You'll see from the scenario that uh, it actually goes into more detail in describing what the desired business outcome, you know, what it will provide to not only our customers but to Rational, but also you know, how the outcome will be measured or verified you know, with the improved turnaround of time improvements, the number of people participating in the review, the confidence and the satisfaction in the correct solution delivered. But also the scenario starts to describe some of the workflow uh, very descriptively. Perhaps a better way to this may actually be to use a business process sketch. And you can see here that we actually have a business process sketch. Let me click that and show you what this may look like. You'll see here from this business process sketch that the workflow um, you know, is represented in a graphical form whereby you create an update review approval request document. You may specify reviewers and then notify the reviewers. Let's now examine a possible you know, ex example sketch of what this may look like. You can see from this sketch that it is just a rough outline of something that you know people may want to do when they're doing review and approval. You'll see that there are some various information where we have the various artifacts, you know, and it's just a suggested state. So this is the very initial cut of what we think uh, iterative review and approval should be. Now that we understand the desired solution, let's examine any exploring some several solutions we may actually have as we progress through this. And you'll see over here that we have a review and approval use case diagram. Let's open that now for further examination. In this diagram, you'll see that we have a number of use cases. Create a review, view a review, and edit a review. We also have a number of actors, an analyst, a stakeholder, and a project manager who may need to actually see this information as it's progressing. Let's now examine the details for create a review. You'll see from the use case details that we have the actor who is the analyst and what they'll performing is they'll start with opening a project page, indicates that they want to create a review, chooses various artifacts and specifies reviewers and any optional instructions and things. This is the main flow that you know people will be working for. And uh, we have various alternative flows and things like this. Because we're leveraging the full capabilities of Requirements Composer, what you'll see here is that we have a fairly informal type of uh, template for the use cases because uh, much of this actual main flow has actually been captured in a storyboard. So let's have a look at that storyboard. When you open the story, 
you're actually presented with a frame list which is just brief descriptions of how the story may flow with the appropriate thumbnails down here. You can examine that in further details. We also see that there are a number of comments here. We have 55 comments. We have a number of different links to information. That's on. And also this is just the latest in a long line of actual uh, different versions. And if I open up the history here, so you can actually see when that version was created by whom and what, and you can see that we have 79 earlier versions. Let's now return to the uh, the main storyboard. And what I'm going to do is actually start to have a look at the review tab. Because what this does is it actually includes a number of sketches and it allows us to tab through the actual process of working and to see how this flow may work. This complements the use case description. You'll see here that uh, when you press the new tab, you're actually presented uh, to request the name of the tab. Once you press return here, it will then actually go on and present you with an editor. The initial editor has the initial states, uh, the due date, some instructions, but also some participants, and you can import this list from previous things. This is one of the enhancements that we made, you know, based upon review. So you'd start off with, say, like entering a due date. Then you'd actually start to add users, and uh, you can make the users an approver, or required reviewer, or an optional reviewer. And then once you've entered the names, uh, you can even have the choice of going through and making a correction. So if one of them was actually, should not have been a reviewer, but an approver, you can make that change. And as we step through this, you'll actually see that you know we can make other changes as well. But then we can actually actually start to uh, add artifacts. And so this is how the storyboard gives us a flow of what's happening and complements the use cases that we have already defined. So we continue with the storyboard until we've evaluated the uh, the solution. Let's now go back and look at this process uh, that we're following and now we want to start evaluating the alternatives and some of the alternatives we may have is well do we need to improve the visual design and one of the visual design uh, storyboards we actually have here is for a rich client and just shows you a different perspective of how it may look like and this is how it may look in the visual uh, visual design where we've made some improvements to the icons the way it looks but also starting to you know provide some additional capabilities here uh, whereby you start to see you know, visualizations of the names, uh, just improvements to the layout, but also there may be a need here to sort of start looking at the life cycle of you know what sort of state should it be in, draft started, previewed, paused, or finalized, and moving ahead, you know, being able to hover over it and see which state we're actually in. These are some of the visual you know, alternatives that we can look at. Yeah, let's go back to the usage model and start looking at augmenting the specification. And one of the things that we may want to do here is actually create a user interface uh, specification. As part of augmenting the specification, you'll see that this document describes user interface specifications focusing on the user interface layout, functions, and interaction. So this is you know, augmenting information uh, whereby you can see here an embedded image that we actually have from one of the sketches, but then various information that relates to that image, you'll see that there are components here. But also if we need to find more detailed information about you know, what are the actions that for a reviewer, new reviewer, we can click on it here and examine that as well. And in this document, you'll see that we have the various roles. The reviewer, uh, what happens when they open from the project sidebar, use a home page, what state, and uh, what should actually happen. And so this is starting providing that augmenting information that is often needed to sort of clarify you know, so that the design team can actually use it and develop the solution. So now that we've actually looked at you know, augmenting the specification, if we go back here, we're now at the stage of developing a solution. And let's look at what we need to do here for developing the solution. You'll see here that you know, some of the developing the solution, we actually have a service for review and approval. Uh, this service will be used to create, update, delete, and retrieve review resources. And as this is being used and developed, so we start to actually develop a true solution. And if I go back to our usage model here, we start evaluating the results and how we have been doing that is actually producing uh, short demos that can actually then be used by various people. And through this collaboration, what we've found is that we've accelerated the confidence, we've accelerated the solution, we've also had a better understanding of what is really needed and have been able to take creative actions early in the process than we ever have done before. And in conclusion, Many of you might be wondering how many people have been involved in Rational Requirements Composer because I'm sure you have a similar team size and distribution to our own. 
and as you can see from this slide, we have 174 extended team members worldwide. I'd like to thank you today for your attendance in drinking our own champagne. Thank you.